have Kalah, the largest ukulele world. They're headquartered out of California, but most of what they have is made in China. The hug line we have, which is our in-house line, everything in that line is an instrument that I designed. Uh, they're all built to my specifications. We have five different workshops around the world, one in Canada, our workshop here, one in the Philippines, workshop in Indonesia, one in tai Taiwan, and two in China. And we all work together so everybody does what they do. Uh, we have the Cordoba line of instruments it is headquartered out of Southern California. And then we have, of course, our Hawaiian brand, Ana Ole. Um, they're headquartered out of Pearl City, Oahu. This is, these two are Mark Evans. Mark Evans is right outside of Hilo here. So these are big islands. We've got Kanalea, that's the North Shore of Oahu. Kamaka, the oldest still operational ukulele company in the islands. Then we've got Koaloha here. Uh, you've got some Pepe Romero Juniors. Pepe Romero is one of the leading classical guitar builders in the world. He also builds ukuleles. It's a great question. The difference shows up because of the body size difference. Anytime the, the body of a wooden instrument gets bigger, the sound that comes out of it gets richer and fuller and deeper. Well, a pineapple ukulele, the body shape is bigger than the standard recurve shape. So you will hear a difference in the sound. It'll be a little richer, sweeter, fuller because that body gets bigger. Same reason a concert ukulele sounds richer than a soprano. Mm -hmm or a tenor sounds richer and deeper than a concert. This, this is one of Pepe Romero's handmade tiny tenors. Uh, we call this sort of a paddle shape. You look at that and you go, okay. This is more brighter, That's right? a much richer, fuller, more vibrant sound. And for any student, I always recommend two rules to follow. Instrument has to be built properly. It's gotta be in tune, not just here, but it needs to be in tune all the way up the neck. The intonation needs to be good. That when I put my finger down, I'm getting the right note. I'm not off a quarter step or a half. And a lot of, of instruments out there just simply haven't been built right. So the only place you're ever in tune is here. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your instrument is in tune here, and it's in tune here. There's an octave. And that's the same note, an octave higher. There's a lot of them out there, everyone. You'll do that, and suddenly it's... And then you do that. Oh. Okay, you need to be in tune. That's the mark of a properly built instrument. Then it needs to be a size that you're comfortable playing. If you're a great big guy with big, beefy, burly sausage fingers, you're probably not playing that one because it's going to be difficult for you to get your fingers on there and move them. A half inch more room here than there. Just in the first two frets, there's a half inch more room. So I need something that I can comfortably hold and I can comfortably move my fingers around and get into those tight cords. If I'm struggling, I'm going to get frustrated. Then that's when I quit playing. At which point it doesn't matter what you bought. You threw your money away if you don't play. First rule, it's got to be playable. When we tune it up, we're in tune all the way up the neck. And then there's a size we're comfortable on. Everything else is a matter of personal preference. It makes a huge difference. If you're in a plywood instrument, when sound is created in an instrument, it's not just created inside the box. It's created in every pore of the wood. So if you're in a plywood instrument, that instrument has no pores because they're all filled with glue. So a plywood instrument gets a bit of a tinny sound. When I go and put a solid wood top on there, that tinny sound goes away. And then what I'm gonna do is demonstrate for you the different sounds here. This is a all plywood, nothing wrong with it. But you can hear the sort of flat tinny sound. That's a much richer sound because suddenly now we have millions of pores in this foot helping to create sound. Okay, so that tuniness is long forgotten. Now let's go to different types of wood. This is an all solid mango. Okay, a little 
harsher a tone. This is solid black acacia. So that's a much softer, gentle, sweeter sound. Solid koa. gentler, sweeter still. Fairly close to the black acacia because the black acacia is the closest relative to koa found outside of Hawaii. Koa is the densest of the acacia, so as the softest, gentlest, sweetest sound. This is a specialty build we did this. Hand-carved golden acacia, Spanish cedar neck, spalted mango, top, tenor size. This is a real pineapple ukulele. That's a solid mahogany tenor from our Amakua line.